a very good morning to all of you today the 6th of april i welcome you all to byju's ias so amidst this heat north india is heated and i'm pretty sure south india would have a lot more heat it would be a lot more warmer as compared to north of india but the uh, the weather would be pleasant so looking at the weather looking at everything we have to keep working hard we cannot stop working hard so we'll be covering the news articles in today's newspaper so as you can see the topics have been listed over here again i welcome all of you to this wonderful platform <clears throat> so these are the topics that we are going to cover today Look at the first topic RBI keeps repo rate on hold as food prices remain high how and why is this important this is something that we need to understand RBI to enable UPI for cash deposit unified payment interface for cash deposit this has to be enabled so these two articles although they are not related but they are important for GS3 economics then we have a couple of articles on international relations again israel hamas palestine issue this issue is far from over and again we go back to the two state solution the two state theory two nation theory to be precise and then we have an article on antibiotics as poultry growth promoter <coughs> so an interesting article we'll be understanding this we'll be seeing this on multiple fronts so these are the topics that we'll be covering in today's newspaper again i welcome all of you to this platform good morning good morning everyone i hope all of you are doing well so the first article is important for gs paper number 3 economics i would say core economics <coughs> it will focus on core economics and we are talking about the monetary policy review that has been done by the reserve bank of india and what changes have been affected so looking at this what kind of changes have been affected let's have a look at this so there are two things and you have to understand them on what front <coughs> let's have a look <clears throat> so monetary policy review mpr it is done once in two months and once in two months basically the tools of monetary policy they review the economic situation of the country when we talk about the economic situation prominently one has to think about two things the first is inflation followed by that the second is growth talking about inflation and growth what is it that is being talked about in this particular aspect when we are including inflationary aspect we have to understand the approach that india follows now and when did it start following we started following the approach of fit fit refers to flexible inflation targeting flexible inflation targeting means that the focus is on targeting inflation at a certain rate this concept was borrowed from certain western countries like norway like america it was adopted by indian government and the monetary policy review because it is being done by the central bank so central bank has to apply it the application of that policy when it comes to central bank <coughs> has to be done on a 
flexible basis considering the ideal rate of inflation in India. Ideal rate of inflation in India is 4% and the flexibility is plus minus <coughs> 2%. It can go up to 6%, it can come down to 2%. This is all the flexibility that is there. Keeping this target in mind that ideal rate of inflation and the flexibility, the upper ceiling, the lower ceiling, floor and cap. Looking at these things, we have to be absolutely clear that our target of inflation has to be kept in mind while designing the monetary policy review. And looking at the <coughs> sorry, monetary policy review, all the tools have to focus on inflation targeting. So the prominent tools used by the Reserve Bank of India are quantitative tools and to some extent qualitative tools. <coughs> qualitative tools we don't get to see that much. These are not that popular. Quantitative tools are visible because they show an instant impact. So when we are talking about the quantitative tools, they are called quantitative because they directly impact the quantity of money supply in the economy. The quantity of money supply means that the increase of money supply or the decrease of money supply depends on, depends on these tools, the quantitative tools. So looking at this, what is it that we are ascribing to the tools? The popular tools that all of you know, repo rate, bank rate, reverse repo rate, open market operations, SLR, CRR and a new rate that has been introduced during COVID, LTRO, long term repo operations and standing deposit facility. So all these are the tools which are used as quantitative tools in terms of effective money supply. So when we are using these tools as quantitative tools for effective money supply, how do we know that what tool to be used and what will be its impact? Normally when RBI increases the interest rates, when the interest rates increase, what do I mean by that? Increase in repo rate, increase in reverse repo rate, increase in bank rate, increase in reserve ratios like CRR, SLR. When these things increase, automatically the money supply goes down in the economy. When the money supply goes down in the economy, it results in reduction of inflation or inflation cutting. And this is primarily the target that RBI has taken into consideration. To reduce inflation. So the inflation that is being targeted or that is being talked about is consumer food price inflation, CFPI, food price inflation. We are not talking about CPI, consumer price index, this measure of inflation is there and that is inflationary in its tendency. We are specifically focusing on food inflation, CFPI. CFPI is at its highest. It's over 8%. It has never, never been this high in the past. I'm not saying in the recent past, but in the past, in the sense, in the last seven to eight years, probably a decade. The food index, the food inflationary index has not been this high at all. So talking about the consumer food price index, because the food indices are very, very high, because the inflationary tendency in food is very high, the, this is concerning the government. Which is why in order to reduce the inflation at this particular level, what is the government trying to do? It is trying to make sure that you fulfill the supply of those food articles and using these tools, you try to reduce the money supply so that this comes under control because money supply has to come under control. The article is talking about this entire thing. So RBI keeps repo rate on hold as food prices remain high. And this is what has to be understood that food prices are high because of multiple reasons. 
because of transportation cost because of lack of supply because of shortage of food articles because of excessive demand there can be multiple reasons looking at all those reasons should rbi have acted on con on controlling the food price index food price inflation probably it should have but more than rbi i think in my opinion the government should have acted because elections are about to start and in elections i am surprised as to how the government how the opposition did not make this into a big issue about inflation because inflation is there and inflation is very high when it comes to food inflation which is a necessity forget about other inflation this should have been made into an issue in india but this hasn't been done so looking at this what actions have been taken by the government of india in order to reduce food inflation none whatsoever let's have a look at the article the food price spike rbi is worried about the spike in food prices despite some moderation in overall inflation overall inflation has been it is high and uh, food price index or food price inflation is even higher so looking at this the food price spike should rbi also have taken an action now look rbi's action is not an appeasement action rbi's action is on the basis of what you best to or what you can best to probably in terms of looking at the whole economy in the long term rbi will not think about elections and take an action rbi will think about the ramifications of its action next 6 months next one year which is good but this food price index should be controlled and if rbi is not doing it then the government should the government of india should be doing something about it so when the government of india acts those decisions would be based on fiscal policy but as long as we are talking about rbi they are monetary policy decisions now what was done mpc decided to maintain its policy repo rate under the liquidity adjustment facility at 6.5% which means it remained the same this marks the seventh consecutive time that the rates have been kept unchanged just for your knowledge the students who do not know and who will be watching the lecture later repo rate is the interest rate at which rbi lends money to commercial banks when rbi is lending money to commercial banks at a certain rate of interest with collateral security very very important this is important for prelims it is done at a certain rate of interest with collateral security like you have to give something as collateral in order to borrow money this collateral security is what this is basically gsec these are government securities you use government securities to keep as collateral and you borrow money this rate of interest is called repo rate repo means repurchase option repurchase option basically means that you will purchase this collateral back from rbi which means you will take the collateral back and you will give the principal amount plus interest on it to rbi which is which is what normally happens if you take a loan from a bank you have to give something as collateral so you give collateral and you borrow money so when you return the money you are basically buying your collateral back that a repurchase i am repurchasing it so repurchase option <coughs> this has been the monetary policy decision the target is inflation inflation targeting approach this is the target this is the thing on which rbi acts precisely this is what it should be acting on having said this i have explained to you earlier that the ideal rate of inflation ideal rate of inflation for india is 4% with a flexibility of plus minus 2% looking at this objective the rbi acts so mpc aligns inflation with target on durable basis while progress has been made in disinflation this task is not yet finished i mean so it basically means that you have to keep on targeting inflation so all these things should be taken into consideration in order to be able to control the food price inflation now look at the funny part if you say that inflation is in control it's very much in control it's under 6% because the upper target is 6% so it is under 6% but when we talk about food prices in particular food only food the inflation is higher than 6% so what should people like you and me expect i mean what what concerns us what concerns a mango person an aam aadmi a normal guy or normal families that at least for people like us things should be in limit things should be affordable at least something as basic as food but even that is not being done 
so factors food price and factors affecting inflation food price uncertainty if uncertainty is continue to impact the inflation trajectory however a record rabi wheat production and early indications of a normal monsoon are expected to temper price pressures and support the replenishment of buffer stocks so basically it means that if supply would be good because of good rainfall in this your buffer stock would be replenished as in your buffer stock would increase you will get your buffer stock back and the rest of the produce because the supply would be high that can that would contribute towards bringing the prices low or bringing the prices to an affordable level but let's see when that would happen because we are talking about rabi wheat production and early indications of a normal monsoon so this is something that has happened during the rabi season and it would happen during the kharif season which has another 2 to 3 months to go another season hence it's a matter of concern to see how things would take place so an interesting article article which clarifies concepts like inflation targeting approach monetary policy review repo rate along with that mpc this is something that i did not discuss monetary policy committee is a committee which is formed with members from the reserve bank of india as well as from the government the primary job of mpc is to recommend that what changes do we want to see in monetary policy in order to keep in mind the larger objective the larger objective is to target inflation so in that particular sense what am i going to do what are we going to do in order to control the inflationary tendency in our country looking at the entire big scheme of things and that is what it contributes upon so there have been certain things that i have included over here as concepts repo rate reverse repo rate so which we have discussed in class and you can read this later so the ppt will be uploaded now coming to the next article a very interesting article again we talk about what we talk about the two state solution and its uncertainty now look what happens is that no matter how much you try a historical war on the basis of area i mean this is something which is stated you know the world is beautiful the land is beautiful the countries are beautiful the only thing is that beauty is claimed by multiple people by multiple stakeholders and when those multiple stakeholders claim the beauty they can go to any extent and that extent can be as violent as getting into a war situation in order to claim the beautiful land which is what we have been seeing across the world whether it is india pakistan whether it is russia ukraine or it is israel palestine and now israel hamas this is a standard love for certain things that force you to go to war so is love war question mark debate for another day we are not talking about that debate but here we are talking about the two state solution and the tiff between israel and philistine is it uncertain is it really uncertain is it that easy who can, who claims or the west wailing wall belongs to which country belongs to which sect belongs to which religion people this is what we need to understand so before the 7th of october 2023 there was a possibility of a palestinian state emerging alongside israel which has been a possibility for decades this is not a new thing that we are studying if when you study international relations especially the israel philistine issue you'll be able to understand how israel was created and since then till now the area of israel how has that kept on increasing so what are the pockets what are the palestinians pockets and what are the pockets of israel now israel is a full blown country and we get to hear about mossad and spy games and all of these things with respect to israel but here we are talking about a two state solution where israel recognizes palestine as a separate country as a sovereign country with no interest of israel in that country and vice versa and it's a clash of ideologies it's not just a clash of land clash of religions clash of ideologies which is why this two state solution is looking bleak and we cannot see properly many rounds of negotiations took place to work out a detailed road map for a two state solution back in 2001 they came close to reaching an agreement this is always said this i have been reading and hearing for the longest period of time in 2002 when in 2000 when bachpai went to bachpai um, uh, went to pakistan we were very close to closing the issue of kashmir but it did not happen 
do you really buy this argument how can you buy this argument where you are really close to closing the solution of kashmir there is no solution of kashmir the solution of kashmir is get out of our land because there cannot be peace talks there cannot be a talk on the table where peacefully two leaders can sit and agree on a land boundary because they don't agree which is why the clashes happen the same thing is going over here are you recognizing what palestine is saying is palestine recognizing what you are saying if both of you cannot come on the same page because you both of you claim the same piece of land then obviously there is no solution there is hardly anyone in israel supporting a palestinian state now nobody is and nobody will because according to them that that place that land that west wailing wall the area around it and the uh, and the issue around it is something which is tamed by them so is palestine going to be a separate state is what we need to understand so now the issue is not with respect to this the issue is the angle of hamas and palestinian authority hamas and palestinian authority i'm going to support corroborate it with a map you would be able to better understand let's have a look have a look at this map i hope you can see it's a uh, it's a small map also so this is israel this entire region is israel the white shaded portion is israel you can have a look this is jerusalem uh, the west bank gaza strip so the recent war that started with effect from 7th of october 2023 was an issue between israel and hamas which dominates the northern part of the gaza strip this is gaza northern part of the gaza strip prominently the war is happening in these two regions uh, uh, concerning these two regions and because of this the refugees in gaza they are coming to egypt which is creating all the bigger problem because no one else is give, willing to give them shelter i wonder what united nations on high commissioner for refugees is doing so hamas is more popular in the west bank than ever before it is popular because it is fighting for a cause it is fighting against israel and hence they get support from palestinians if the war ends elections will be held in palestinian territories which which should be a good thing rather elections being held so it would be peaceful for people hamas had a good following among west bank palestinians and now support for hamas has grown significantly so the palestinian authority based in ramallah is discredited among israelis and palestinians so hamas is likely to emerge as a majority party just think what are we trying to the the world that we are heading to the world that we are heading towards is that afghanistan is dominated is ruled is governed by the taliban the west bank will be governed by a a terrorist a militant organization if not terrorist a militant organization in the name of hamas now you tell me what kind of talks would be held do you think that the world leaders on a global stage would go and meet the leader of hamas or would go and meet the leader of taliban when india what india afghanistan relations do we study now who do we talk to do we talk to the taliban because taliban is it is under the control of taliban similarly if elections are held and hamas comes to power who do we talk to who will modi ji go and talk to will he go to the uh, militant organization state so the the look at the psyche of people who are supporting a militant organization and the militant organization is becoming so powerful that it will gain that much traction that if elections are held a militant organization will come to power so what kind of psyche are we carrying as humans so israelis would only consider a palestinian state if hamas were eradicated which is pretty obvious who would want a militant organization and a militant leader to actually dominate the entire country so it's pretty interesting to see the the light of things that would unfold in the following 6 months to 1 year so i hope you're able to understand what kind of a situation would come up in this particular territory right so just have this particular space as an active space uh, whatever articles come in the future you should be following those articles it, it's pretty interesting now coming to the third article focusing on health so what are we talking about we'll be talking about the antibiotics gs3 health so it, it's important for uh, from the health perspective uh, you can say it can be useful for science and technology as well as i would say this article is important from the point of view of gs2 governance gs2 governance governance has a topic by the name of issues related to 
education and health right so you can use this knowledge as a part of governance as well and over here it can obviously be used in this particular case there's something by the name of antimicrobial resistance amr if you have not uh, read the term or if you have heard the term for the first time i i'll try and explain it to you antibiotic resistance which means that antibiotic becomes your body becomes resistant to antibiotics when we talk about antibiotics it's something which is very simple it kills bacterial infection i'm pretty sure you would have had antibiotics at some point in your life when you fall ill or when you get a test and you see certain uh, uh, certain levels which are high in your complete blood count test with leukocytes and you know lymphocytes etc so when you look at the test results the doctor comes to know that the uh, the there is bacterial growth in your body which is spreading in order to control that bacterial growth we need to give a certain antibacterial medicine which is antibiotic now antibiotic is something which is given to people and which has in order to treat only the bacterial infection now the problem is that so many people including kids as young as kids who are 4 years 5 years old because they are born in an environment with so much of infection so many infections that they keep that you keep feeding them with antibiotics i can vouch for this because i have a kid who's 1 year old and we have been giving him antibiotics for the last 1 year and they every 2 3 months antibiotics start so that is only to kill the infection because of the weather in delhi because of constant coughing because of constant running nose etc etc fever so when we talk about antibiotic resistance young kids are becoming resistant to antibiotics which means those antibiotics are not working on human body so when we talk about this particular issue how do we come come up with a solution that will treat you in the future which means that you need a stronger antibiotic so looking at this first let me explain uh, about amr anti microbial resistance So this is antibiotics used on companion animals and livestock. Antibiotics pollute the environment. Import of livestock and food travel. They are used on humans. And when they start becoming, when you are using them everywhere, so the point is that bacteria, the bacteria which is killed, that bacteria becomes resistant to antibiotic. And when that bacteria becomes resistant, obviously the bacteria has become stronger. And when the bacteria becomes stronger, you need a stronger medicine for that. And this is why this article is important. so antibiotic resistance is spreading all across humans from one human second human family to a group of humans it is spreading so what have been the indian initiatives to tackle antimicrobial resistance the national program on amr containment launched in 2012 so this has been strengthened by establishing labs it focuses on one health approach with the aim of involving stakeholders of various ministries and departments so basically they have to focus on the research wing they have to focus on coming up with a stronger medicine and they have to focus on making a new salt in order to be able to treat this kind of an inf infection so icmr has taken initiatives to develop new drugs new medicines through international collaborations to strengthen medical research in amr and this is something which is required right now coming to this article what does it say it state venkies is reportedly selling products containing antibiotics crucial for human health aimed at accelerating poultry growth some antibiotics are also being marketed for preventive use on farms in order to have such poultry where the poultry is not affected because of the consumption of uh, uh, consumption of meat consumption of chicken the use is controversial the antibiotic use is controversial why at least two poultry farms in southern telangana were found using these antibiotics including for preventive purposes as recommended by venkies despite opposition from who now the thing is when you have got an opposition or when you have gotten a, a stoppage something that probably should not be used something that probably uh, you should wait on using this is so i'll give you an analogy what happened uh 12 years back in 2012 you might have heard when you study green revolution you might have heard of the bt technology bt cotton 
बी टी टोबेटो बी टी बसाइलस सोरेन जीएनसिस थिंग्स हैव बीन यूज दैट टेक्नोलॉजी हैज बीन यूज टू ग्रो अ बेटर क्वालिटी ऑफ प्रोड्यूस विदाउट अफेक्टिंग द नेचर बट इवेंचुअली देर वॉज अ मोरिटोरियम imposed on bt technology use of bt technology in india by the court moratorium of 10 years which has now been extended so the kind of concern was that it is affecting the soil health even so people said that okay we will not grow bt vegetables we will grow bt cotton so cotton is not something which is to be consumed that's okay it is not something to be consumed but it is affecting the soil those chemicals are affecting the soil hence the use was limited it was not banned per se but it was limited it was drastically reduced here we are talking about a similar kind of of a solution where who has said that you should not be using this but still they were found using it and that is something that became a cause of concern so poultry producer venkis is accused of marketing antibiotics for farming practices that contribute to the spread of drug resistant infections the problem is this this is the problem according to tbij this is something that should be stopped in fact if you keep using antibiotics to that extent they will become resistant eventually sooner or later if not now let's say over a period of 3 years 5 years it would start getting resistant and then you would be needing stronger doses and eventually what happens to that chicken what happens to that poultry they are consumed so it affects the human body eventually that is the truth so look at the concern which has been raised the unmonitored use of medically important antibiotics in the poultry sector for non therapeutic purposes is criticized by experts warning it could lead to disastrous consequences which is the truth this is something which is happening hence the cta or the call to action is that experts have emphasized to address the misuse of antibiotics that antibiotics should not be misused in the poultry sector to prevent further spread of drug resistant infections and safeguard public health because it's all about public health eventually so it's a good article and this space should be checked for articles in the future all right now coming to the next article gs3 economics page number 11 focusing on this RBI to enable UPI for cash deposit. So, what is it that we are trying to state? RBI is enabling UPI, Unified Payment Interface. The people are shocked. You have international leaders walking in India, walking on the streets of India, using UPI, being able to pay like this without having to pay anything, without having to pay any commission, any charge, and that is how effective the fund transfer on Unified Payment Interface is. It is actually UPI. and it is a seamless upi unified payment interface it is a seamless interface it is a smooth interface fraction of a second we are able to do the transaction simply scan and pay this convenience is not there anywhere in the world trust me on this i've traveled a lot i mean outside india if you travel to european countries they still are so hell bent on taking cash you give me cash cash they don't even accept a card credit card is something that they abhor they say that okay pay me cash if you don't pay cash they will not sell this is the big problem a very very big problem india is trying to solve this problem and they over there in those countries the consortium of the banking sector the consortium of the banking sector the lobby of the banking sector is not allowing upi to enter those countries because the bank wants a commission on the transfer simply speaking if there is a commission on the transfer like if i transfer the money to you and if the the bank start charging a commission on it i will not do it the minute commission is charged it what is over the game is over so when we talk about upi enablement uh, for cash deposit or some other things with respect to upi so as you know that we have been doing upi lite and upi cash deposit e rupee also some way upi can be used so the seamlessness and the smoothness of the transaction would have this kind of this kind of an understanding so rbi plans to enable the upi for cash deposits due to the popularity and convenience of the app which yes is there we know that so the development and regulatory policies have to be proper and this has to be kept safely we have to make sure that it is safely done using upi so upi is not a wallet upi is just transfer facility so cash deposit facility are available through the use of debit cards where you are using 
so what what is what is a debit card debit card has you are debiting money from your card which means that already has money in your account if your account is zero you will not be able to withdraw money because there is no balance so it is like a prepaid card and this is this can only happen if cash has been deposited which is what rbi is trying to enable on upi now so introduction of upi for cash deposit aims to enhance customer convenience and reduce cash handling load on bank branches you don't have to handle the cash load now let me make you understand what the problem is the problem is not that banks so basically what happens let's say there is a transfer this is the first person this is the second person all right uh, so i have a upi account this person has a upi account which means it is linked to the bank account and this is also linked to the bank account all right i scan and i pay to this particular person so this payment has been done when we say that this payment has been done instantly i will get a debit message this person will get a credit message and it will start reflecting in his bank account all right this reflection in the bank account will keep happening but the settlement in between banks so the settlement right now has happened between two people that my money is debited his money is credited but the settlement has to happen in between banks all right this settlement that one bank has to pay to the other bank the settlement in between banks takes 4 to 7 days 4 to 7 working days it might take up to a week this settlement is delayed which is why the banks lose out on interest money lose out on cash money probably don't. so if there are 10 million transactions happening on a daily basis with respect to one bank so think that 1 crore accounts or 1 crore transfers have happened on in one day and that will be settled after a week so i have to receive that much money but i will get that money after a week are you getting the point so this has to so cash handling load on bank branches and bank people it will reduce if it is a debit card facility because in debit card facility you it is prepaid like money has already been transferred and now it is being paid but here money has not been transferred money is directly being transferred the settlement in between banks will happen at a later date this is something which is due to happen so according to this the upi transaction has to be made a little better and participation of a wider range of people is something that they are aiming at so look at this uh, the rbi aims to facilitate wider non resident participation in sovereign green bonds by permitting eligible fis in the ifsc to invest in such bonds so this is with respect if you if you look at the upi thing if you look at the upi understanding they are trying to go this route whether it is successful or not it is something of the future but here the kind of uh, transaction which is happening in between the user and in which between, between the payee who is actually receiving so user the one who is requesting the initiation and request forward and trying to pay and trying to receive funds this is something which would happen on a seamless basis or on a more seamless basis with this facility so it is the kind of you can say the settlement that will happen in between banks earlier than required it used to take time earlier now it will take lesser time this is something that is being focused upon so some background about upi is given this i mean this i'm i'm sure you would obviously know it's a system that powers multiple bank accounts into a single mobile app of any participating bank merging several banking features seamless fund routing and merchant payments into one hood so facilitated by npci national payment corporation of india now coming to page number 12 international relations important for gs2 so india is being accused of a particular thing and that is that whose side are you on now this taking sides is obviously a problem it's a huge problem when you have to take sides when i say you have to take sides it basically means that if two countries there is a dispute or a tiff or a conflict between two countries you have to decide which country which country's side am i on okay so that obviously is a problem if you want to maintain good rapo like if india wants to maintain a good rapo with both the countries russia as well as ukraine it would never say that 
Russia is, is a country that is doing wrong with Ukraine or Ukraine is something that is doing right with respect to Russia or Ukraine is facing the wrath of Russians uh, uh, or wrath by Russia in terms of this war. Something right has not happened. No, very few countries would take this stand. So when we talk about Israel-Gaza uh, issue and the vote calling Gaza ceasefire, on what basis should India support the uh, 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 the atrocities which supposedly are happening on people living in Gaza. Eventually, if you look at the psyche, try to understand, try to understand the politics and the image behind it. If we start supporting a Gaza ceasefire or if we start supporting something wrong is, has been happening in Gaza, it is providing an indirect support to Hamas. And how can we be seen, India be seen, providing uh, an indirect support to Hamas? Do you think that is, that is wise? Hamas is a militant organization. Every country says one thing that we don't support terrorism, we don't talk to terrorists, we don't support militancy. And here you are supporting a region which is actually fighting, which is actually, its, its premise is based on what? Its premise is based on militancy. It's a big issue. It's a very big issue. So in your opinion, and give, do give your answer in the comment section, what should India have done? Should India have abstained or should India vote for things which are happening or obviously killing of people can never be justified that something wrong has been happening in Gaza. So what, what about the wrong things that you have done in Israel? That question can be asked. So why not support Israel? So India abstained from a resolution at Human Rights Council that called for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza and an arms embargo on Israel. Embargo means that you have to stop. There has to be a kind of a ban. Abstention aligns in with India's previous votes on HRC resolutions related to accountability. Accountability towards that what we are doing is not right or what you are doing is not right and we would hold you accountable for whatever wrong has happened and might happen in future. So criticizing Israel for human rights violation against Palestinians, obviously this is the support that other countries are uh, providing to Gaza by criticizing Israel and addressing, uh, addressing Israel's occupation of Syrian Golan, Golan Heights, towards the northern part of Israel, supporting the Palestinian right to self-determination. So this is something which is why, this is something why the, the Gaza issue has taken steam, that there has to be a ceasefire so that there should be no longer killings that, that are happening over there. Now, uh, so a bigger point is, will Hamas also stop the killings in Israel, would Hamas also do the same? They would also stop the killings in Israel. This is something which is supposed to be known. This is something which is supposed to be done. So the US, Germany and four other countries voted against the resolution. They voted against, which means they did not vote for the ceasefire. India joined France and Japan among 13 countries that abstained. Abstain means no voting. A significant majority of 28 members, including these countries, voted in favor that they want the ceasefire. So this is this has been the global voting pattern with respect to Israel-Gaza issue. The four resolutions were introduced at the HRC by Pakistan on behalf of the Organization for Islamic Cooperation. HRC resolution failed to condemn Hamas while condemning Israel's actions. Now look at this. This is precisely what I'm trying to say. Israeli actions are being condemned because Israel is talking and Israel is a state. Who is fighting? The government, the armed forces are fighting. Do militants ever listen to anyone? Would you talk to jaish e Muhammad? Would you talk to uh, lashkar e Taiba? Would you talk to Taliban? Would you talk to these people? Obviously no. So how do, how do you expect Hamas to listen? Why would they listen? If you talk about a ceasefire, this ceasefire applies to Israel. But does the same ceasefire apply to Hamas? So why should anyone favor or why should anyone vote in favor of Gaza? You are voting in favor of Palestinians. Uh, or you can say you are voting in favor of civilians, which is absolutely correct. But are civilians fighting for themselves? No. Hamas is fighting. God knows for who. Hamas is definitely not fighting for the civilians. Who is it fighting for? It is fighting for itself. It is fighting for a, a useless or a, um, uh, you can say, a nonsensical cause. So including killing Palestinians and imposing a blockade on food and humanitarian aid. So this is something why the voting happened and this is not something which is supported or which happens to have this kind of a situation where, um, uh, where they are attracting, you can say, um, uh, they are attracting this, they are attracting 
all the aid that is coming plus they also want relief they want welfare for the people and they want some sort of shelter so everything should be given but at the same time hamas will not act hamas is not willing to act now very very important in this particular sense is to understand what is india's stand on this entire issue bharat ka is sthiti pe kya stand hai what is india's stand in this situation now india's stand in this situation is that india <coughs> supports a two nation solution when it comes to israel palestine so when i talk about a two uh, nation two state solution it can only be done by a dialogue and that conflict can be resolved by a dialogue but are you willing to do that dialogue or not so this kind of a solution is obviously not the solution because that dialogue cannot happen which is why the attacks from hamas they keep on amplifying and that keeps on creating a problem so have a look at this india was the first non arab state to recognize plo in 1974 this i'm pretty sure you would have read or heard by now india officially recognizes palestine as a state in 1988 and post 90s after establishing full diplomatic relations with israel india stands at the un has evolved showing more abstentions and occasional opposition to resolutions that appear to be singularly critical of israel so basically india has not held back where israel had to be criticized now the point is that if we have recognized palestine if we have recognized uh, palestine by having diplomatic relations which basically means that we have recognized you as a state and we would maintain close ties we would open an embassy you also open an embassy in india so this kind of relation has been established so what does this mean this means that we are supporting a two state solution to the israel palestine issue and by diplomacy and dialogue only this thing can come to fruition or this thing can be done it cannot be done in any other way so abstention from voting is probably a wise decision in my opinion it is a wise decision what do you think you should definitely write it in the comment section as to what should have been done so let's look at these questions mains questions good questions actually evaluate the effectiveness of india's foreign policy strategy in promoting its global standing and addressing pressing international issues so uh, india's foreign policy strategy in promoting its global standing and addressing pressing international issues pressing international issues are right now uh, russia ukraine and israel hamas provide examples and analyze the implications of india's decisions on its diplomatic engagements and relationships with key global stakeholders so i mean this can be a little shorter question or it's a very long question and these can even be framed as two separate questions so you can write about the global stakeholders where india's relationship with israel and palestine is a very healthy relationship abstention from voting does it actually spoil the relationship of india with these countries or either of these countries second when we talk about russia ukraine india's support to ukraine or india's support to israel Uh, uh, india's support to ukraine or india's support to russia is something that we have to see that does it actually do any good to us so what kind of a diplomatic win is it what kind of a trade win is it what kind of an economic impact has it had on india this is something that we have to focus upon so should we look at ourselves or should we look at uh, the lives which are being lost in between the war which is happening in between both countries so both things there has to be a trade off so if india is able to buy cheap oil from russia should that compensate for any kind of things which are happening uh, as a tiff or as a conflict between two countries or should we let them be should we just focus on our trade with with one of the countries this is something that has to be sought this is something that has to be understood discuss the factors contributing to the rise of anti microbial resistance and its implications for public health agriculture and environment so this is something uh, this is also a direct question you can uh, understand or you can read the factors those graphics which we had discussed you can write the answer on the basis of that so there has uh, this these were the articles in today's newspaper the one term that you should know tylosin anti microbial used for veterinary vet um, animals uh, a doctor of for, for animals issue is that some of its type is used in humans too hence the chance of creating amr if consumed in large amount so obviously if you consume it in large amount or if you keep popping a pill on a daily basis it would create resistance so this is called tylosin which is an antimicrobial drug used for vet 
so this is about it where we have discussed multiple articles many articles in today's newspaper and i always my focus is to try to keep things crisp like too much discussion it doesn't actually solve the problem it creates more confusion it's better to keep the articles crisp it's better to make sure that we are focused on a thing which is required for the examination and obviously it is required for multiple purposes like it can be required it can be used for writing an answer it can be used that knowledge can be used for writing a paragraph or writing a couple of lines in the essay in international relations if psir is your optional so across it can be used at many places so i hope you liked it and do uh, tell me in the comment section as to what more articles do you want to see from us what more type of discussions do you want to watch from us that would be all from my side signing off this was ayush sanghi on byju's is youtube channel thank you so much everyone bye take care and all the best